Brother and sister, good morning. And the brother and sister online, good morning. We are starting a new book in the Bible today. First Chronicle. In Hebrew Bible, Chronicles are one book. It's it's one book. And then oftentimes you assume it's written by Ezra. Because in the last few verses, it's the same as the beginning of Ezra, the book of Ezra. So it's basically after Israelites being captive, it was written at that time. And after they recovered. So to Israelites is not very easy. Even though they felt like that they are chosen by God, people chosen by God. They have Moses, the, pen, uh, the Pentateuch of Moses. There's a lot of miracles. And then in Kings, there are lots of prophets. Now, of course, God is with them. But now there's no more. This kind of nation just suddenly went away. And it's basically, they were captivity. They were, they were under captivity after captivity. Then the South Kingdom was destroyed by Babylon. So they lost the nation. Then Babylon was uh, taken over by Persia. So under a lot of big, a lot of miracle, they were able to recover and regain their nation back. Now, how do you able to face this new situation and new religion, the art, the religion again? Of course, in this process, just like the book of Malachi, they couldn't experience God's love in their life. Then the environment is very difficult. Then the enemies are staring down on them, and they're not letting go. You experience captivity after captivity. Then the following path, how do you continue? So this is the circumstance they are facing in this decade. So Ezra wrote First Chronicle. Then Chronicle has a unique point. A lot of names. First verse to nine verse, the, not verse nine is a whole section. Now, how do you see these uh, names and this family tree? The history. Because in Genesis, in all, many places, they continue to write. So there's a lot of these family tree. Why do you need to write it again? This is something that Ezra wants to respond. Through these family trees, the names, then can retell the story of this history. Then you can say it like this. So when they're able to see some prophetic books, they can see that Israelites have sinned and they were warned. The Israelites, they refused to listen. Then, of course, they lost the nation. Then when they wrote the Chronicle, it was different. The, in the prophetic books, it talks about why did it end up being like this. It explained this background story because Israelites have sinned. But, but in Chronicles, it able to provide a new angle. And it's that Ezra said, I help you to see and retell the whole entire story, the whole process again. Because now the condition is very difficult. But God is here. God is in the history. He has always been controlled. Then this God continued to lead us. So it's a comfort. So to say that Ezra 
are able to retell the history again, then we need to ask God to help us. That during some difficult circumstances, when it seems like the circumstances is very, very bad, you can still see the footstep of God. This is what Chronicles want to say. So in this chapter, I call it the, the reveal of God's uh, salvation, God's, God's plan for salvation. So God's salvation, uh, the plan for salvation starts with Adam. One to four. Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenneth, da, da, da. This is Chinese translation. But in the original language, it's not who birthed who. It's actually directly Adam, Seth, Enosh. Continue to write unto to Noah. And then it's Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Kind of like the English translation. It's very direct, very clean. Adam all the way to Noah. This is God's salvation plan. Then you need to pay attention to a few. The first is from Adam. In 611, we are gen very familiar with Genesis 1. We are a church very familiar with Genesis. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And then it was dark, darkness everywhere. Continue. And then it's a work of restoration. So when Adam comes, it's for his job is to do res restoration. This is the beginning of God's redemption. So continue. Then there is, there is Ken and Abel. Then we can pay attention. Ezra did not write Ken and Abel here. It continued to jump to Seth. Because? Because the brothers did not get along, then God will set another path, his path to Seth, to continue to bring redemption to the whole earth. So to a point that you can see in Genesis, that you see a lot of stories. But then when you come to Chronicles, then Adam continued to, Adam immediately jumped to Seth. So redemption started with the line of Adam and Seth. Then one to four is basically the time before the flood. So from Adam to Noah. Then it's five to 27. Then God chose Noah and Abraham to redeem the whole earth. God chose Abraham and Noah to redeem the whole earth. This is the title. So in here, God continued to work. So from Adam continued to the flood, the time of the flood, then the whole earth was fallen. Then what is in the man's heart is evil. Then what does God do? God continued with this redemptive work. He chose Noah's family. Then, then the flood, after the flood, then God kept Noah's family. Then there's Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Then continue you down. Then he chose Abraham. So isn't it after the flood, people's heart, is it more reverent towards God? Not really. So this is what he want to express continuously. Five to seven is Jephthah's family. And here you pay attention is verse 17. Then 
it talks about verse 7. So it talks about Aram and uh, uh, that section. So it talks about Java. It will, it will rise up the Greek, the nation of Greece. Verse 7. So under captivity, they were under the captivity of Persia. But continuously is Greece. Now here it simply talks about um, Jephthah's family. The A to 16 is talking about him. Then as you look at these names, you there is no special emphasis on certain names. <clears throat> then you're just letting you know. Then some then some points they will emphasize and that's their point. For example, verse 10, Cush was the father of Nimrod who became mighty warrior on earth. So Cush is who? Now after the flood is someone who's taking the leadership to uh, go against God. Some people assume that he's the guy who built the Tower of Babel. He wants to build a tower that can reach the heavens. So according to history, this tower is able to connect to spirits. We are, are interacting with evil spirits. Then for the sake of spreading their news, and they do not want to spread out. Because God wants them to spread all over the earth. So he's the one who took leadership to fight against God. This is from Ham, Ham's descendants. Then it talks about Philistines and Canaanites. These are the enemies of Israelites. So 8 to 16. Then 17 to about 27, some verse. It talks about Shem. Then we hear, we see some points here. First, verse 19. Two sons of Eber, one is named Peleg, because in his time the earth was divided, his brother was named Joktang. Joktan. Now here it's emphasizing they were divided into two different places. Why do they need to divide? Because they are responding to the incident of Tower of Babel. Because because of Tower Babel, so God is mixed up their languages. Then at that time, they need to be divided. So it's as if the whole earth was against God. Then verse 17, it talks about Aram, Az, Ho, and Gether. So these are the enemy of Israel people. Then the three descendants of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. Here, it listed 70 names. Then you realize 70 is a special point because Israelites, when they went to Egypt, when, when they get out of Egypt, it's already 70 people too. When God... Uh, when Israelites uh, made a covenant with God, it's also 70 elders. So 70 means a uh, number of, for the nations. So as if God continued to lead his people, he's very clear of his plan. Then it looks like as if nations, there's a lot of changes among the nations, but it's all within God's guidance. This is 17 to 27. And then 24 to 27, it focus talks about the Shem, Ham, Japheth, the family tree at that time. Let's see. 
the Adam to Noah is one generation, and then it's flood. Now, after the flood, Shem to Abraham is another time period. Oh, it's ten, ten generations. So it's like before the flood, God has chosen Noah, and after flood. Then when everybody moved to the east, then he has chosen Abraham. And it's just so, so much coincidence. It looks like so many people, they live among this time, but God's redemption path is very clear. Then verse 27. And Abram, then that is Abraham. Abram become Abraham. This name change was done by God because God has chosen. So Abraham was chosen by God. Israelites were descendants of Abraham. So even though you are under captivity now, but you are chosen by God. Ezra, you need to continue to emphasize the, how the whole land, God is always working. Then, 28 to the end, God continued to choose. It Isaac and Israelites to redeem the whole earth here. 28 to 37, it talks about Abraham, the, it's basically talking about the descendants of Abraham. 28 talks about, it's Ishmael and Isaac, 28, verse 28. Then 29 talks about the descendant of Ishmael. 32, the son born to Keturah, Abraham's concubine. It's concubine, it's not wife. It's a bit different. In Genesis, you see Sarah died. Abraham married another woman, Keturah. But to Ezra time, to Chronicle time, then Keturah is a concubine, not a wife. So they want to emphasize from concubine is not the path that God has chosen. Then, then also there are other concubines. They all become the enemy of Israel, Israelites. So through these family trees, then he's trying to express 34. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and the son of Isaac is Esau and Israel. Then you pay attention. It didn't say Esau and Jacob. Actually, all these names have special meaning. Because it's talk about this name has been changed. This name is ch changed by God. This person is chosen by God. So in Israel, from Adam to Noah, from Noah to Abraham, to Abraham to Israel, God's chosen has been. God's path for chosen people has been clear. 
Even though you see different nation being rise up, different nation attack the Israelites. But God's um, path is very clear. So this is God's choice. It, there's no condition. So these Israelites who've been ca under captivity and they also restored their nations, Ezra basically saying we have we're all chosen by God. The Keturah, the line of Keturah is doesn't count. E Esau's line doesn't count. Our whole God's work is basically to the to this path. Then, 35, verse 35, talks about the sons of Esau. Then 36, you can see there's a Amalekite. So you can see that they're actually descendant, grandson of Esau. These are all enemy of Israelites. Amalekite. Then 38 to 41 is a bit special. It talks about Sayer. Sayer. Then 38 to 42. So this group of people, they are They are not from Abraham. They are from Edom. Then they came to this point. Now all the people were included inside. So when it's taking care of these group of people, they are trying to address the original people from this place. Then, then it basically, it, 43 to 54 talks about the record of this group of people. It's a bit special. Here it talks about it, Edom and uh, and the king. So it's a bit special first. Because it talks about 43. Ding, Ding Haba is the city's name. Then 46, the city was named Avith. Then 50, the city is changing from one to another. Then the beginning, then 44, it, it talks about Jobab died, and so and so died. Hushem died. It's different from before. So you keep emphasize that these kings of Edom is basically they're killing each other one by one. So this king was killed by somebody else and then somebody else, some other king rise up. So this king allowed here to become the main city. Then the other king used the other place for their main city. So in Israel, they, before they have kings, Edom, Edom already are very much active and alive. Before Israel be live, um, Israel set a king and decided on a king, but Edom king are very active and alive, as if they were very powerful. But in God, in the spirit, it's all meaningless. In that period of time, as if it seems like if they're powerful, but they will all pass. So it's 
So don't look at what's happening with Edom. It's basically Edom is Esau. So you need to look at the path of Israel. This path is chosen by God. Esau is not important. Now you also talk about that Keturah is also not important at all. Even though they become the enemy of Israel. And it looks as if they are very powerful. But God's decision of chosen people is very clear. Chronicle 1 to 9 is trying to explain this concept in a very clear way. Then through the whole entire family line, you can able to see how God chose his people. So to us, it's the same. They're actually very easy that we are able to see negative things. Some people, they especially remember negative things, so especially when they want to give thanks. They don't know what to give thanks for. In the Before I had this kind of problem. And they need to see the work of God. When God continued to lead, even though, even though that for us, like we've gone through many bumpy roads, but God's guidance is very clear. We need to see God's work. Every turn needs to be clear to me. Actually, even serving, there's high points and low points. Doing ministry is like that. Then you wonder what went wrong. But to me, I feel like that to coming to Hong Kong, that is absolutely the right decision. Now, I don't need to think about before I, before I came to Hong Kong, what happened to me? What kind of things have made the wrong decision? Don't need to think about that. Once you come to Hong Kong, there is clear signs from God and guidance from God. I am in God's plan. So everyone can look at it like this. You can see God's guidance. For two, 611, it's like that too. So about 100 night evangelism meeting. It's so strange. SARS and it's 100 nights. Now you would think 20, 2003, God is guiding us. Then come to Chun Wan, it's like that too. No one will move their church in this kind of distance. But the whole process, God continue to bless us. So you know that 2007 is still very, very right. Now, of course, there are lots of things happening in between. But you need to remember God's guidance, God's leading. For example, at that time, we had some we had some attacks from the media. Then it just happened that we picked Job, Job, 60 chap, 66 chapters. We picked it just like that. Last week was uh, exegesis and sentence flow class. Tuesday talks about that scripture is inspired by God. And then it's so on. These are actually drawing lots. That you realize, as we continue to look at this, there's a lot of God's guidance. It's very clear. Then you will know that God is watching us. You can, God continue to lead us. You will have faith. You will know how to continue to walk this path. 
This is Ezra's heart. He used his spiritual eyes to be able to express this um, family tree again. Now everybody can see that God continued to watch over the Israelites. You need to ask God to help us. You need to know that God continued to guide us. You don't need to continue to see the problem. The problems can be discussed and be prayed and pray over. But if you see God's guidance in your life, you will be thankful. You will have faith. Let's worship our God together. Hallelujah. Let's all rise up and praise our God together. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you have chosen each one of us from beginning to now, that you continue to watch over us, you continue to guide us, that we praise you, we give all the glory to you. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. I praise you because you create heaven and earth. Lord, you create us. You let us to be unique. Lord, we praise you. Let our life to be very different because you redeem us. You have a clear salvation plan. We praise you at this moment. Let's voice out and praise God for his chosen and our uniqueness. Let's praise our God.
Lord, we thank you because you give us life. Lord, you let us have life for everything, every goodness. We offer our praise and great thanks. Lord, you are the one who give us breath of life. Everything is from your thorn. We thank for our fatality, Lord. We praise you that I can come to the this world. Every life is valued by you. Our breath of life is given by you, and we can become your children. You give us ability. That we can live out every day to belong to you. We praise you, Lord. Everyone praises God. Everyone is chosen by God. Just now, Pastor Jason said, "We are all saved." Let's share with your neighbor how God saved you, how God brought you to six one one. Let's share. Let's share the joy to others. After one sharing, another can share because I believe how God saves us is different and unique. Brothers and sisters online, 
You can respond to God, how God saved you in your life. Let your life respond to God. Dear Heavenly Father, I praise you. When I still didn't know you, but you choose me and my family members to believe in you, and I can become your children. I can be a person with grace and favor, and then my next generation and my whole family can come under the tree of life. I praise you. You choose us and my family. And then you offer grace to us, and this generation, and the next generation, and generations to generations. You wrote, you write our names on the book of life. It's by your chosen. I offer praise to you, Lord. Yes, Lord, I praise you through my schools. They are Christian schools, and you put the seed of gospel in my. Hot, and then after I giving birth, and then when I grow up, you send angels to me and my husband, and bring us to church, and then let us baptize and know you. Miraculously, you send a preacher, a pastor, and bring us to six one one, and all is all by your grace of your hands. We praise you, Lord. Let's stand and worship our Lord. Lord, we offer great thanks to you. It's you who chooses us. You bring us into your heaven and your redemption. You let us see not only in the Bible we have family tree. Every one of us, we also have our family trees on earth. And then in the book of life, our names are record. Let's pray for two things, brothers and sisters. We pray for the family members. They are in difficulty, and they still haven't come to Christ. We pray that they encounter God and enter into kingdom, God's kingdom. After three, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We can pray now. Lord, I pray for the family members who still haven't come to Christ. I know you're a faithful God in their sickness and their weaknesses. I shake your hands, Lord. I pray and cry out on you. 
I have to see my whole family to come to Christ. You listen to every cry because you are a faithful God. You send angels to them. You give us a ticket to enter into heaven and into the redemption. They think that they don't need you, but I cry out to you. You give them grace and mercy. You speak to their heart. I cry out to you. You give them redemption. Lord, for my family, I cry out to you. Lord, you choose me in the family to be the first one to come to you. I proclaim the whole my whole family members. They come to Christ and all the blockage in my family have to leave and we belong to Jesus and my whole family belong to God. Lord, I praise you and thank you because you are the God who listens to prayer. We receive your redemption and when we pray for the family members who still haven't come to you, you must work in them. We thank you through today's scriptures. You tell us that we are easily to rely on ourselves and then we are easily lost in our mindset. But today we see that in our family tree, we can see the chosen by God. That we thank you, we have the root in you. Because you choose 611, we thank you. And the whole 611 church, in the bread of life, we have Pastor Chu. You call him and your light and your kingdom to come to earth through Pastor Chu. And we can become Jesus' disciple. Brothers and sisters, let's rise and stand for our life that we can rise and respond to you shepherding and to preach gospel and plant the tree of life and let the whole world to respond to God, let's pray together. Lord, we praise you, we praise you. We lift up our hands, we lift up our hands, we say to the Lord, I am here, I am here, I am here. Today I hear, I listen, I hear. In this family tree, you speak to us. In a church, you choose Pastor Chiu, you choose Taipei 611, you choose Pastor Jung and Simo at 611 and you choose every one of us in front of you. We say to you, Lord, I am willing to receive gospel and we rise to shepherd and pastor. And we disciple the whole nations. Let the whole earth respond to you. Lord, this is our follow with faith. We follow you only, Lord. This is the only way. We just follow you to plant the tree of life all over the nations and earth. In our life, we can shepherd and pastor by your spirit. We can shepherd. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's close our eyes. Adam, Sav, Enosh, Canon, Mahalalair, Jared, 
Enoch and to Abraham and then Jesus and a lot of preacher and pastors they go overseas they come to China they lay down the wealth of their family the wealth of their cities they come to China they risk their life they went to Shanghai and then God chose Pastor Chu and Pastor Chu went to Taiwan and then he gave birth Pastor Chow God has to work in Hong Kong and then we have Pastor Joshua and every one of us no matter you are on site or online you are also chosen at 611 Lord we stand at 611 we say to you Lord we don't want to divide we don't just want to be bigger and many but we have to give birth because you give tree of life to us we are not fighting for being king but we want life because you give life to us you give us tree of life Lord we keep in your life Lord pour out your life to 611 right now when people give up on giving birth but we say to you Lord we have to give birth because this is your promise and this is the gift this is the gift for you to people that we have to give birth we don't have to put a lot of effort we don't need to learn a lot because you give us life more more a life that overcome death triumph over curses triumph over all the destroy all the fear Lord give us the great power of life into 611 into our brothers and sisters life all the financial fear in Jesus name I proclaim you cannot block us to give birth to relationship the broken the fear in Jesus name I cast you away you cannot block us to give birth Lord you give us grace in Jesus name I proclaim no matter we give birth biologically or spiritually you give us to our brothers and sisters let us have the joy of giving birth I bless every brothers and sisters let's say amen let's give great applause to Jesus bless everyone to give birth